Welcome to the Living Well Show, where we have holistic conversations that inspire healing, hope, and transformation with your hosts, Dr. Albert and Shanique Tompkins. Hi, I'm Dr. Albert. Good night, everyone. I'm Shanique. Welcome to another show and hope you all are doing well. We're excited for another great session. And so, Shanique, start us off today, please. Well, I am excited about tonight's conversation. We're talking all about migraines, back pain, and energy regains. Mm. We have with us Dr. Shanika Jackson, and Dr. Shanika is hailing all the way from Austin, Texas. She is a graduate of Life University, where she completed her doctorate degree in chiropractor in 2000. And she is also a graduate of South Carolina State University, where she obtained her bachelor's in biology. Dr. Jackson also served with the United States Army from 2002 to 2006 with the 31st Combat Support Hospital mm -hmm. at Fort Bliss. Thank awesome. you for your service. Yes. Thank you. She has also been serving as a chiropractor in the Austin, Texas area for over 14 years. Wow. Dr. Jackson, always one to learn and study and grow, is uh, continuing that process by working on her certification for applied clinical nutrition. And she and I actually share a favorite quote by Thomas Edison, which reads, the doctor of the future will have no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease and that is so true for today yeah so good night dr shanika welcome to the living well show go ahead and greet our guest today hi good evening everyone it's, it's such a pleasure to be here with you and to talk more about what i do as a chiropractor i'm super excited about this evening Awesome. Well, why don't you just jump in and tell us about your journey? What led you to become a chiropractor anyway? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a very interesting journey. Like since I was five years old, I always wanted to be a dentist. That was like my whole life goal. Our dentist in the little small town that I'm from in South Carolina, he was actually one of the first black dentists there and we used to go see him and I loved his name was Dr. Goggins and I just loved everything about him I wanted to grow up to be like Dr. Goggins and so I went to uh, South Carolina State University and majored in biology and you know minor dental school right and I had gotten accepted to a school up in Illinois and there like right before I guess maybe it was our spring semester, this guy actually came to our college and he came to the biology department and he was like, what do you guys know about chiropractic? And I was like, chiropractic. And so his words were really motivating. They're really inspiring. I never even thought about being a chiropractor. And I went home and told my boyfriend, and he was like, oh my God, that's so awesome. I always thought, you, I always saw you doing something great with your life like chiropractic. So he introduced me to their collegiate chiropractor because he played basketball and they actually had a chiropractor on staff and he would adjust all the players. And he was like, oh my God, you're going to love being a chiropractor. I really get to help people. And I was just like, okay. I got really nervous because I didn't know if I was going to get in or not. And so I got into chiropractic school in Atlanta, Georgia, Marietta, actually, and I decided like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And it was, <laughs> it was very challenging. Some people think, you know, who've never been under chiropractic care. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so much easier than going to dental school. Right. Because I was like, you know, chiropractors, you just pop some bones, you know, you see people after a motor vehicle accident. How hard could that be? And <laughs> So when I got to school, I had a, a rude awakening. We had two and a half years of anatomy. We had to know how every organ in your body works. You had to know every muscle, how the muscle attaches to the bone, what action that muscle does. We had to learn the central nervous system, like all the tracks that go mm. through every inch of the body. We had to understand the peripheral nerves, how that information is sent back up and then we dove down into the brain, how each part of the brain and the cortex and, you know, the brain stem and 
all of that, how all of that works. And we still, we still had to do toxicology, not as much as a medical doctor does because we don't prescribe any medicine, but you still have to know how those drugs interact with the body. We had to learn x-rays. We had to learn like hard tissue where every bone is on an x-ray and even soft tissue. And again, chiropractors just do muscle skeletal. But if I'm taking an x-ray and I notice a mass or something, you know, unusual, I have to be able to identify it to get it to the right place. So we had to learn how to see carcinomas, how to see collapsed lungs. I mean, it was a lot. <laughs> so it was way, it was a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be. There's a lot of education that goes into chiropractic and chiropractic care more than what I initially thought. And a lot of people go to chiropractic school because they've had like some chiropractic, I hate to say miracle, but how chiropractic had changed their lives. But mm. I had never had a chiropractic adjustment until I was actually in chiropractic school. And if we get to it, I'll kind of tell you about my story when I was in the military. I don't want to say too much all at one time, but I'll come <laughs> back to it. So it's a, it's a very wrong. interesting story. <laughs> Okay. 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 No problem. We'll make sure to get that in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a great story. I love the fact that you were inspired by your local dentist, but you found out what your true calling was as you stepped out there. So, so let's let us know: Is there a particular technique that you're using um, in your practice? Yes. So I did go to Life University under Dr. Sid Williams. Now our school is not that old. It's, it was founded in 1975. So I say that to say I specialize, got my spine here. Oh, I nice. specialize in what we call upper cervical work. And I know a lot of people go, cervix? What? I don't want you messing around. And I do realize, you know, because they say cervical cancer, right? But in this case, we're not referring to the uterus. We're referring to the top of your spine right here. Maybe a little hard to see this top bone. This is the okay. base of your occiput, the base of your head, your skull. And this top bone right here is your atlas, right? And okay. this is the first line of communication between the brain and the rest of the body. So your brain stem actually descends out of this large hole. That large hole is called your foramen magnum. As the brain stem descends, your spinal cord begins. And that very first bone that you go through here is your atlas. So the reason why I said I went to life is because uh, Dr. Sid Williams had started our school in 1975. It hasn't really been that long ago, but he accredited getting upper cervical chiropractic care for him to be able to walk. Now, I want to share this little quick story, just really, really sure. quick. So yeah. he went to Georgia Tech, was a big time football player and got injured on the field. And when he got injured, he literally got knocked cold and he couldn't move his legs. And this is in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia. And he went to all the specialty places. He went to Emory. Emory was the top one that he went to, he talked to the top neurologist. And his mom and dad, one of their friends was like, you should take him to a chiropractor. And I was like, a chiropractor? Why would we take him to a chiropractor, right? He does have back pain pain, he can't move his legs. And yeah. so they took him up to Davenport, Iowa, where the first chiropractic college was started. And he actually was adjusted by the developer of chiropractic. His name was BJ Palmer. And he wow. adjusted his atlas, that top bone in your neck. So it literally sits right behind your earlobe. There's a little soft space at the angle of the jaw and right in front of the mastoid bone is where your atlas sits. So it's a highly protected vertebra. But mm. after, I would love to say, yeah, he got one adjustment and you know, he was healed. No, mm. <laughs> over yeah. a course of a year and a it's half, a he was getting, yeah. it was a process of getting adjusted, doing his rehab. But that was the one thing that really helped propel him back into walking. And so he was like, he's from Georgia, and he was like, what is this voodoo that y'all do up here? I got to learn this. And well, if you would have ever met him, he's like larger than life. But I guess everybody who starts their own thing is very eccentric. And <laughs> so he got his degree in chiropractic, was licensed, and then he came back to Georgia. And he's like, oh, I got to teach 
teach people this in Georgia because they're not going to want to go all the way up to Iowa. So he started his own school with a trailer. And now wow. they have now about 7,000 students that go to this university. So it's still a small awesome. school, but most chiropractic schools aren't really that large. But that's a, an okay. incredible story how he started school from a trailer and five students <laughs> to now wow. over wow. 7,000. So he was big on upper cervical. And so um, just hearing the stories and being able to help patients. We started out in a student clinic and then you reach out to the community and they get to come in for a, a cheaper price, right? And to get the chiropractic care that they need. So that's really awesome. cool. And that, that's what really inspired me to do upper cervical work. Okay. Awesome. So you gave us a lot there talking about the atlas and the little connection between our nervous system and the, and the brain. So how exactly does a spinal misalignment impact our nervous system? Perfect. All right. So I'm going to use my little board here. Okay. All right. So you can't make fun of my drawing, right? No, we won't do that. <laughs> so I'm going to, all right, perfect. I'm going to use this to kind of explain how the nervous system works and functions. So here, I'm just going to draw two circles. Right, and that represents the left and the right half of the brain. Here at the base is your brain stem because we're just going to keep it real simple. And from your brain stem, your spinal cord descends down, right? And then you have the vertebra that are protecting your spinal cord. But from the spinal cord, you have nerves that branch out, and these are your spinal nerves here. And then you have nerves that go to your arms and hands. Right, and those are called your peripheral nerves. Now, within these nerves, there are three different types. You have motor, you have sensory, and then you have a mix of both. So what's really cool is motor nerves originate here in the cortex, right? They travel down through your uh, brain stem and out through your spinal cord into organs, tissues, cells, and glands, right? And then you have what we call, now those are the motor nerves that go to the heart, telling the heart to beat, the lungs to inflate, telling your body basically what to do, right? They're like the motor in your car. They make things function or they make things okay. happen. And then you have the sensory part and these nerves go from the body parts and organs back up the, the spinal cord past the brain stem and into the brain, right? Mm. And then you have a mixture of both. Now, the cool part about this is that it tells your body where it is in space. It tells you like you've been touched. It sends a message, like if I was to touch your knee or to pinch you, it sends a message up the spinal cord to the brain. The brain interprets it, then sends a motor response back down through. And so the cool part is, is that the first bone that it goes through is that top bone in your neck, which is your atlas. So when the motor nerves originate, they have to go to this top bone. Now, whether this nerve is going out to your arm or whether it's going out to your big toe, they all have to come through that top vertebra and the same thing going back, wow. right? And so if we were to look at that at a larger scale, right here, we have our muscles. Here, we have our organ and organ function. And down here, we have the immune system and the endocrine system, right? And over here, you have your cranial nerves. So wherever you have muscles, uh, you have nerves that go to every single muscle in your body, voluntary, involuntary, even muscles that you didn't even know you had. Anytime these nerves are being compromised or interference, you're gonna have a dysfunction, right? And this one, most people get, right? You did something, you lifted something, you bit a certain way, you slept funny on your, your pillow, you woke up, now you got a pinched nerve and you're like, oh, my neck hurts, or oh, I knew I shouldn't have lifted that uh, wash machine, now I got back pain. You get the correlation, right? A pinched nerve caused that pain. You can have a pinched nerve whether you feel it or not, but these same nerves that go to every muscle voluntary and involuntary also go to your organ and organ functions 
but it's very rarely that you hear somebody say, oh, I'm having um, reflux. I must have a pinched nerve at T7. I got to go see my chiropractor, right? Mm. They, there's no correlation in between there. But those same nerves that are coming right down from the brain, that information down the brain stem, down the spinal cord, those same nerves are going to the organs, right? Mm. Thank God I don't have to tell my heart to beat because I have so much other stuff to do. But it's <laughs> constantly doing that. The brain is constantly sending information down it's getting red and it's coming back up. So any place there's going to be interference, you're going to have dysfunction. And so here, and this is my last point about the nervous system, especially with the cranial nerve. So we have 12 cranial nerves. Only one of these cranial nerves is long enough that goes all the way to the heart and to the stomach. And that's the vagus nerve. The rest of them feed back up into the brain. So when you have misalignments here, people may have symptoms like, I'm not quite sure if you ever heard of trigeminal neuralgia. Mm -mm. No. So it's considered like a suicide disease because it literally, the nerves that come around, these cranial nerves that come around to the face, the eyes, and the jaw, they're so inflamed, it's painful. Can you imagine somebody having a vice grip on one side of your face and just squeezing wow. all day? They're normally in constant pain but oftentimes it's because there's an issue with the cranial nerve or a person may have Bell's palsy, which is um, cranial nerve five, or they may just have a vagal response where everything is just kind of haywire. Those are all related to the cranial nerves. So anytime there's a disconnection, you're gonna have malfunction. So, and getting back to your question, I think, did you ask me about migraine headaches or did I get ahead of myself? I might have got ahead of myself. I get a little excited when I start talking about the nervous system. <laughs> it's okay, but migraines is where we're going. So we can lead right into that, yeah. you know, understanding what causes migraines, neck pain and back pain. So you can continue to flow. Okay, perfect. So as I was saying, you have these nerves that branch out, especially when a person has migraines and they branch back up into the head. So anytime there's any pressure being put on there, being put on these nerves, these nerves are being compromised. And especially the nerves in the first two vertebra in your neck, they go to the eyes, the, the nose and to the throat. So oftentimes when there's a misalignment here, it'll cause dysfunction that goes back into mm. your brain. And that could be, the, sometimes that is the cause of what People have migraines or even headaches. And oftentimes mm -hmm. with chiropractic care, especially with upper cervical care, those migraines are able to be relieved. So I have to mm -hmm. be careful that I say like, it's not like a cure, right? So it's right. not like chiropractic care cures headaches. We're just working with the skeletal system because there's normally a disconnect between the brain and the rest of the body. So all we're doing is removing that interference so the proper information could get down to the organs, tissues, cells, muscles, and that way they can read the information correctly and come back up so that the body is allowed to do what it's known to do, which is healing. And so I always like to correlate a misalignment, like the whisper story, not the whisper story, but have you ever played like the whisper game? Right. I tell you something and I whisper it to you and it goes yeah. around to three or four Telephone, people. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But you hear it one way and by the time it gets back around to you, it's sometimes totally different than what it started out with. So when there's that misalignment here where the bones are out of alignment, it's putting pressure on the nerve. So the brain is telling your body to do one thing, but because there's a misalignment, it's misinterpreted. So okay. because of that misinterpret, the body tells it something else. And by the time it gets back up there, it may be this nerve may be telling, oh, my back hurt, my back hurts. But because the message was wrong, it's like, oh, no, everything's fine. But my mm -hmm. back still hurts. But the, the message is getting misinterpreted. I don't know if that was a good explanation or no. not. I mean, <laughs> so it's a I communication like, highway, the spine and the nerve. And when that, when that highway is not clear, you're going to have problems and issues. That makes a lot of sense. So as you're talking about that, from your perspective, what is the difference between a chiropractor, how they differ from a physical therapist? What is the difference there? 
Okay, that's a great question, right? So with chiropractic, we work primarily with just the bones and the misalignment, right? Mm -hmm. So our job is to detect and correct misalignment. And with physical therapy, like she said, this top bone here, which is T1, it also goes across, you have muscles that attach that go to the shoulder, right? And you may have tight traps. So oftentimes as a chiropractor, I'm looking at the misalignment, like where is that bone out of alignment? So my job is to place it back into alignment, but oftentimes because you have muscle that attach to these bones, physical therapy goes to strengthen those attachments, right? To strengthen mm -hmm. the muscles. Once you have stronger muscles and these vertebrae in the proper alignment, then your body can function and move better. So our job is to mm -hmm. correct the misalignment and a physical therapist's job is to strengthen the muscles mm -hmm. around around those okay. bones. So it allows the body to stay upright, right? Mm -hmm. And moving and functioning. Okay. So they're very closely related. So a lot of times we, um, as chiropractors, I love to refer people out for physical therapy. If they're actually going to do the things that actually strengthen their muscles and massage. So we work okay. very closely in the community because oftentimes you have muscles with knots and aches and injuries that may not have been corrected. Because sometimes when you have slips and falls, are the main causes of what we call subluxations or the bones out of alignment, but then the muscles just kind of get used to holding in that, in that misalignment. So wow. that's why it's always good to have a good physical therapist and a good massage therapist on hand. So you can actually work those knots out and strengthen the muscles that are around the bone. So chiropractic care, because you have young children that suffer from headaches and migraines, as well as older persons, uh -huh. uh, what age range is it safe to get uh, chiropractic care? How young is too young and how old is too old? <laughs> so I'm smiling because we have patients who they go to the hospital, they deliver their baby and they're like, hey, will you check my, my child? So they're not going, hey, will you check my child? I think he has back pain. But a lot of a lot of times just the birthing process itself can be very traumatic to the mother mm -hmm. and to the baby. So I'm going to yeah. share my son's story. My son, who's now 17, when during his birth, he was a cesarean because I have very, very high blood pressure and I was at a risk for a stroke. So, you know, they decided to do a cesarean. But I guess the way Garen was in the uterus, it was very hard for them to get out. So they actually put a suction on his head. Now, of course, as a mom, you don't see any of this. But my husband at the time was telling me, oh, my God, I can't believe you, you didn't feel that. Like, he told me there was a heavy set lady who laid on my leg. And the doctor had his foot up on the gurney and was pulling and yanking to get him out. And... Um, I was like, no, I don't remember any of that. But I used to notice, like, Garen would be fine, happy, healthy. And then the next couple of days, his fever would be 105 degrees. And I was like, oh, my God, what did I do? You know, it's for my first baby. You're like, oh, I think I broke him. What's going on? <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, he has an ear infection. And I was like, an ear infection? Oh, and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's very common. But I noticed that there was a cycle. He'd be good for, like, 10, 15 days and back to the emergency room because his blood pressure would be up so high. And we just kind of dealt with that for the longest. I had never adjusted a baby in my life. And I was like, I don't want to break him. So we actually went to a friend of mine who's a chiropractor and he was like, I don't understand like what's going on. So he was getting him adjusted, but he was still getting ear infections. And so I went and saw a mentor of mine and she was like, we got to give him x-ray. Right. So, you know, like at this point, like my heart is beating a lot, but she was like, we don't know like what's going on. Like, why is he continuing? And he's under chiropractic care. And sure enough, we got him x-rayed. And when you look at his spine, the normal spine should have a nice curve in it, right? A C-shaped curve. And there's no tension on the spine. But my son's spine was straight like this. And at 
it's hard to say. I wish I had his x-rays, but at C2 and C3, they met at a point like this. So instead of the vertebrae slowing like this down this neck and C-shaped curve, the top two, the second and third vertebrae met at a point. And she was like, we got to start getting them adjusted. We were adjusting on the wrong side. But with the x-rays, we were actually able to see exactly where the misalignment was and what we need to do to correct it. And so we don't pop little babies necks, right? A lot of the <laughs> vertebrae are cartilaginous, right? They haven't completely ossified yet. So they're very soft. You can actually adjust a kid by just using the tips of your fingers, sometimes just using your pinky. Their mm. bones move very easily. It doesn't require a lot of manual movement, but we start adjusting them on the other side and slowly but surely he started getting better. And um, like that quote from Thomas Edison, I had to start making sure he was eating a lot healthier, healthier foods, healthier snacks, more apples, moving away from, you know, how like, especially when they're little, because by this time, when we got the x-rays, he actually had like little teeth and stuff. So I would give him like crackers and stuff, but crackers, those peanut butter crackers, aren't necessarily good for kids, right? Because they have, they just have a whole bunch of junk in it. So I had to clean up his diet, make sure that he was eating very clean and also making sure he was getting adjusted. And I think the combination of those two things really helped him tremendously. I mean, like from kindergarten to like ninth grade, he had like perfect attendance. Like he never missed school because of, you know, like being sick. So wow. that part was super cool. So awesome. you can adjust infants. When I was on a mission trip, like where they have chiropractic mission trips and we went to Panama and most of the people speak Spanish and I don't speak Spanish, but they would come to get adjusted, right? And I would ask like a lady, hey, can I check your baby? And it was amazing because they just hand you your baby. And I was like, if I did that in America, people would be like, what the heck? I am not giving my child to adjust. There's nothing wrong with him. They're like, oh yeah, sure, check him. And you know, they're just like, good, yes. And they're so, it was, it was an eye-opening experience about just the level of trust that they have because they were getting adjusted. And they was like, why wouldn't I want my child to get adjusted? So that's one of the great things that I really, really, really enjoy about doing chiropractic mission trips. Just, they're just so grateful for us to be there. And we go to places that don't really have chiropractic care. Well, we take for granted, you know, in mm -hmm. the US and Canada and the UK, there are places outside of those larger countries that are, are grateful to receive the aid and the care and the knowledge for the community and village. So that's awesome that you're able to be a part of making a difference in the world in that way. Uh, as we begin to, to wrap it up, uh, let us know. Tell us about your business and how can persons get in contact with you? Okay, perfect. So I work in a practice. It's called BACK. And so it's B-A-C-K-N, like the letter N, and it's balance. And we're hooking it on 3930 B Caves Road, which is FM 2244 in Suite J. And that zip code is 78746. Our phone number is 512-479-7878. And yo, know, I would love to, you know, just call, make an appointment uh, with myself just to get your spine checked and to see if you are, if you are having any health challenges or anything like that to see if chiropractic care can help. Okay. And lastly, are there any last words you want to leave with the audience for you? Yes. Every chiropractor is different, right? It's just like going to a, a, a hair salon or getting your nails done or men going to a barber. Some barbers don't work for every person. I just employ people to give chiropractic care a chance or a try. If they go to the first chiropractor and they go, no, I don't really like him or her, don't give up on chiropractic. It just meant that their premise or what they do may not have fit or been congruent with what you were looking for. And so there are 
lots of chiropractors that their main goal is to remove interference and just, you know, try it out, give chiropractic care a chance. And also every chiropractor doesn't pop your neck. <laughs> so we do not pop neck. We, uh, we actually want to use instruments. We're very specific. We take x-rays to see exactly how that bone is misaligned. How long has it been that way and what we need to do to correct it. So we have a very, 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 very gentle approach to correcting misalignment. Sometimes it's like so gentle, people are like, it's underwhelming, but the okay. implications of the adjustment is long lasting and is very effective. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you audience for joining us today. We appreciate Dr. Shanika Jackson yes. sharing her expertise in this wonderful area, how to help us out and understand our body and our nervous system. Uh, we hope you all learned something today that will help you be better, do better, and live better. And we'd love to hear from you all and let us know how you're going to take the information you learned today and apply it and maybe try something different and get your, get your spine and your nervous system checked out by our wonderful chiropractors. And remember to share and to like and to review this episode. And we look forward to seeing you again next week right here on the Living Well Show. Thank you very much. God bless. Have a great night. Good night. Thank you, guys. Good night. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Good night.